how long have you been successfully on this journey of abstinence? <sighs> Successfully, well, yeah. here's see, see, a lot of people be talking about they be abstinent, but they, you know, they, 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 they say they've been abstinent for ten years, but they've had some hiccups along the way. But they just gonna count it all together and say ten years. So, in your journey, has it been hiccups? Has it been moments where you, 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 you backslid? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is. I love. I love that question. See, here's let me let me take you back to the when I first what my journey started twenty one years ago when I was twenty five. Twenty one years ago. Yeah. I never imagined my journey would inspire people all over the world. Hello, my name is Nema, and I'm from Zambia. So I love the Dear Future Wifey podcast. For me to see people being so real, so honest, and so true about the real situations in life. Hey, I'm Natalie from Belgium, and I would like to, to say thank you. I value your content because it is Christ-centered. You have set a standard in love. Dear Future Wifey Podcast has um, opened my understanding. I highly recommend that everyone, whether you're single, you're married, you're divorced, you're widowed, everyone to go follow this podcast. Continue with me as I discover, uncover, and recover love. I'm Latera Sar Whitfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. How y'all doing, Lit family? This is your boy, Latera Sar Whitfield, host of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Man, this is season two, and I'm so excited. Listen, make sure that you stop what you're doing right now and subscribe to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Um, we're on an amazing journey, and I thank you for just tuning in every week. You guys have been inboxing me. Y'all leave comments on the videos, and y'all say, can you please talk about the subject matter of abstinence? And while I am not qualified, ah, come on, somebody, to speak on this, I feel like God is taking me on a journey with which I'll talk about uh, further in this episode. I said I wanted somebody that has uh, been gifted and anointed on this subject matter. So on today's episode, we have Lestine Bell, who's a, a minister. She's a published author. And I believe that God is using her in remarkable ways to talk about the subject of abstinence. So welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast, Lestine Bell. Wow. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Listen, <laughs> Lestine, now we, we about to talk about some stuff. So we, I'm ready. So listen, you are on an amazing journey. When we talked, you have been on this journey for quite some time that we'll talk about uh, on this episode. And before we talk about that, I want you to give us some some history. So how did this journey begin? This journey began long before I became an adult. Okay. Um, it started with trauma from my childhood. I was introduced, and a lot of people, they wonder why I'm so passionate about this subject, because yeah. I'm extremely, if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> That's what I saw. I saw a video of you just going hard about the subject matter. And I said, <laughs> okay, I felt something when she was speaking, so let's let's go and have her on season two. Absolutely. Um, I'm very passionate about it because um, I was introduced to sex before I needed to know about sex. I was introduced to sex at the age five, six, seven years old, where I was sexually violated as a child. And I freely talk about this subject because now I'm so free and, yeah. you know, God has really healed and restored my soul from the trauma that I experienced as a child. But that is the root. That's where it started. Yeah. Um, when I was violated by a family member. And of course, you know, as a child, you know, you told not to tell. So of course, you know, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my father who absolutely loved and adore me and my sister yeah. who just recently passed away back in May of um, lung cancer. But um, we didn't, yeah, we didn't tell anybody. Um, so, that trauma, you know, that pain and that hurt, it was, you know, it was really digging deep inside of me. And um, from being molested as a child, it introduced me to sex before I needed to be introduced to sex. So it started a path of promiscuity mm -hmm. as a teenager. And the result of that, I became a teenage mother. At what age? Um, my first child was 13 and my second child was 18. Okay. So you see the molestation, yes. five, six, 
And so now, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, it becomes a part of your life. So when you had a child, at th- you had a child when you were 13 years old. Yes. How old was the, the young man? He, well, he lied and said that he was 17, but his mother exposed his age. He was 21. Oh, wow. A 21 year old having sex with a 13 year old. Yes. And his and we was his whole family. We was all sitting in the living room having dinner. And um, his mother said, did you know that he was? And so that was he was he was just blown away by that. But and so and that was just that was even more trauma for me because it's it's almost like I was being sexually violated. Yes. um, By a predator. It's not almost you were. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And so God revealed that to me later on. And so. Um, I became a teenage mother. I'm 46. My daughter is 32, so do the math. Mm-hmm. My son is 27. Mm-hmm. Beautiful children, two amazing children. And um, so I became a mother young, and I became a grandmother young because of that journey where I was sexually violated as a child. And so just trauma on top of trauma was being piled on. My mother and my father end up getting a divorce. My brother, my only brother, because my mom and dad had four kids, three girls, one boy. My brother was murdered when he was 18. He was the oldest of us four. And so it was just trauma on top of trauma on top, on top, of, top trauma. of trauma growing up. And so my spirit, I was acclimated to trauma. Mm-hmm. So entering into my young adult years, I was drawn and attracted to toxic men. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Because I was a broken woman. I was my I was acclimated to, you know what I'm saying? To yeah. brokenness. I yes. was I was comfortable with brokenness. Yeah. And so that is what started the journey, you know? And um so here I am. So so you've been I want you to tell the people how long have you been successfully on this journey of abstinence? <sighs> Successfully, well, yeah. here's see, see, a lot of people be talking about they be abstinent, but they, you know, they, 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 they say they've been abstinent for ten years, but they've had some hiccups along the way. But they just gonna count it all together and say ten years. So, in your journey, has it been hiccups? Has it been moments where you, 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 you backslid? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is. I love. I love that question. See, here's let me let me take you back to the when I first what my journey started twenty one years ago when I was twenty five. Twenty one years ago. Yeah, I was in a relationship after I had my two kids. I entered into a relationship with a spiritual leader. When I came into the kingdom, I was very young, fresh out of the world, still a very broken woman. Didn't know who I was. You know, just suffering from trauma, low self-esteem, yeah. low value. You know what I'm saying? Just no confidence. You know, I had an identity crisis coming from being molested. Yeah. You know, your mother and father getting a divorce. You know, your brother being murdered. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just came from just a history of trauma. And so you have an identity crisis and you don't know who you are. You don't know how to flow and operate in the world. You don't know how to make great decisions for your life. You're going to continue to make negative decisions for your life. So when I did, because I was raised in the church, my mother and my father raised my sisters and my brothers and I in the church. So I was already introduced to God as a teenager. Okay. God drew me into the kingdom young. So I, my last time when I went to the club, I was 21 years old. People go to the club when they're 21. <laughs> yeah. I came out of the club when I was 21. I was done. So, but you know, the Lord, he had a call on my life. So he had to draw me in. But the final straw was I, I caught a case and I was facing 20 years in prison. Okay. 20 years. In, okay. You done, you done caught a case. What, what you, what well, you it was, a, well, it was, it was, it was, it was a drug case. It okay. was a drug, it was a drug case. Um, I've never done drugs, anything like that, but the people that I was associating with, you know, I was drug, drug trafficking. I was drug trafficking. Yeah. And, um, just traveling in and out of the country. You know what I'm saying? So you, okay. You was like a Frank Lucas. You was going all over. Out yeah. The I have literally gone from the mafia to the ministry. <laughs> I'm serious. It's literally like a mafia to the ministry because the people that I was dealing with, you know, they were, you know, in the they mafia. Were connected. They yeah, yeah, I was I was literally dealing with people that was literally in the mafia. I was level. flying back and forth, you know, bringing drugs in and out of the country. And um God said, "Okay, it stops here." Because he had a call on my life. Yeah. So I ended up 
catching a case and I was facing 20 years in prison and, um, God, long story short, God completely delivered me. The lawyer that I had told me to, you know, do like a plea and, yeah. you know, it was my first time getting in trouble. I'll go to prison, you know, maybe six months or a year and I'll get out. But that's the first time I heard the voice of God and he's the Holy Spirit said, don't accept anything. I'm going to deliver you completely and totally. That's the first time I heard the voice of God. And so I you mean, told audibly, the attorney, no, you said, I'm I not said gonna no. Take the plea. And he thought I was crazy because he had been an attorney for over 20 years and he knew that he knew the yeah. cycle. He know he know the pattern of the system. And um, he said, that's just not going to fly. You can't, <laughs> you can't beat if you this. go, if you go before trial, you're going to go to jail possibly, you know, you Up can't to 20 years. Let's go ahead and take the plea. I said, no, I said, God told me Now he really thought I lost my mind when I said, God told me to not accept anything. And so I did. And, um, the, um, detective that was really out to get me, they thought I was a madam. They just thought I was just out there. He literally, I mean, I went, I, I bailed out of jail. Um, I went to court one time. I had to go back to jail because the bondman, he was friends with the detective. He, they sent me back to jail. I had to bond out again. So it was a vicious cycle. But the person that was out to get me, the detective that wanted me to go to prison, because he looked me in my eyes and told me, he said, you're going to go to prison for the rest of your life. He literally walked into court the day of my, when I went to court, he literally walked, I was sitting there with my attorneys. He walked in the courtroom with his files and he walked up to the judge and said, let her go. We're, we're, we're dropping the charges. Just let her go. They wanted to absolutely remember. God told me he was going to deliver me totally and completely. What did the judge say? He called me up, called my attorneys up and he said, case number so and so and so he said, it's been dismissed. He said, you are free to go. Was that in the state of Texas or some other state? No, this was in the state of Alabama where I'm from. Mm -mm -mm. And, um, so that was that was you the first they ain't encounter no where black I people said, slide on the, in Alabama. No, they're not letting them slide. <laughs> but but when you have a when you are called and when God's hand is on your life, you got to understand. My father was a praying man. My grandmother was a praying woman. So I was covered in prayer. You know what I'm saying? And not only that, God, he he wanted to use me out here. And I remember right before. I went to, to court that day. I was sitting in my car and I was crying out to God. And I said, God, I know you can use me in prison. I know you can use me in jail. I said, mm. but father, I said, but father, if you, if you release me and if you let me walk, because nobody's going to love my kids the way I love my kids. Yeah. I said, I will serve you for the rest of my life and I will empower your people until I leave this earth. And I'm telling you the presence of God came in my car and I was slain in the spirit. And he literally said, it's over. And how old are you? You were, you were 21 at the time? Um, no, I was, yeah, I was about t almost 22. I was very young. I was very young when I caught that case. And, um, so yeah, the, the, the power of God came in the car and he's, I heard his voice. He said, it's over. So when I went to court the next day, that's when the detective walked in and said, let her go. I don't see how you sat in there. I would have ran around that courtroom. <laughs> they would have thought something was it. wrong with me. I would have I, lost I, my <laughs> mind in there. I would have danced. I would have pulled up something, some worship song on my cell phone know, and started I dancing. To, <laughs> that just, but that was my first time like really experiencing the, the the love of the God. The love of God. Uh, the power of God. Because I I don't want this subject, I don't want this episode to be about um, molestation and rape. But I know for a fact mm -hmm. that you had to look at God sideways after him allowing you to go through what you went through as a kid. Absolutely. I did look at God sideways, but I never, for whatever reason, I never became angry with, with God. And now as I have been walking with God over the years, I understand personally that God is not cruel. God is not vicious. He is not vindictive. You know what I'm saying? Yes. God love us beyond anything that we can imagine. And now I understand since I have a relationship with God and I spend a lot of time in the secret place, I understand that God doesn't, he don't coerce people to do things. Yeah. God is not the, he's not behind. Yeah. You know, I understand now that there's a real enemy of my soul mm, and is. I understand that, you know, that enemy, that there's a demonic spirit, you know what I'm saying? That is behind individuals that, because see, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The enemy, he wants to get us when we're young. Yes. See, he got to get you when you're young. He uh, started with all of, a lot of us when we are, well, not all of us, 
Most, Most of, of us, us when we're young. When we're young. To he, plant those seeds. He plant those seeds and he snare our soul because he want us to spend the rest of our lives. Trying to get untangled from it. Trying to get entangled from it and anger with God. Mm. He has not changed his strategy. From the Garden of Eden, even yes. until now, his number one strategy is deception. Yes. And dis- and he wants to distort us, to s- distort our identity. And not only that, he wants us to move away from the presence of God. That's why when he tempted Eve, I'm about to go there with, go. The, with, the, abs- with the absence thing. Notice, he did not go to Adam, he went to Eve. Yeah. Because watch this, men are moved by what they see, women are moved by what, what they, they hear. hear. <laughs> that's why that's why the enemy went to speak to E because he had to penetrate her mind. Once he spoke to her mind, he was able to deceive her, to convince her, to, to distort her thinking, to cause her to think that, oh, God didn't really say what he really said. He didn't really mean yeah. what he really meant. So I said that to say this, the enemy, he started young because the enemy is obsessed with our soul and he is obsessed with our time. He is out to abort our destiny and abort our purpose. That is why the Lord have me talking about abstinence. That is why he had me talking about soul ties, because if you think about the history of your life, the history of my life. And everybody that's watching, one of the number one things that the enemy uses to get us off track, and that is relationships. Mm, 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 Come mm, on, let's mm. let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. When we make those detours, and even us who are Christians and those of us who are believers in Christ, one of the things that the enemy can use to get our mind off God, and that is sex, that is relationships, and that is wrong connections. And that is why God sent me here today. That is why he had me on this path because the Holy spirit, Jesus left the Holy spirit in the earth to get us to our destiny. Yes. Jesus left the Holy spirit in the earth for us to fulfill our purpose. You know why Jesus left the earth so fast? You know why he left at 33? Because from the moment he got here to the moment he left, he never allowed the enemy to distract him. He never allowed anything to detour him from his calling and why he was sent to the earth. Not even his friend, not even Peter. When Peter was saying, hey, listen, I'm going to protect you from dying, Lord. He said, get behind me, Satan. Because yes. he said that you are getting in direct opposition with my calling, with my purpose. And and if and Peter, I know you love me, but I got to die. Because when I die, I'm going to redeem the whole world. And I know you're trying to protect me, but if you're trying to protect me, it's going to ruin a whole generation. It's going to remove. So, so yes. So, I totally understand how relationships uh the devil will penetrate and infiltrate our relationships to, to take us from the direction that God has us on. And he will always use those people that, and that's why God says there shall be no other gods before me mm-hmm. is because oftentimes we get in relationships. We make those people gods in our life. Absolutely. God showed me that soul ties, sexual soul ties. And many of us who was entangled and some people that's watching right now, that's entangled in those soul ties. And it's so difficult for them to let that relationship go. Even though the Holy spirit is speaking and saying, that's not your wife. That's not your husband. They still maintain those connections through conversations, through spending time with those individuals is because it's idolatry. There it they is. have entered. God showed me that soul ties and sexual. It, it, it is idolatry. They have entered into a place of idolatry. They are worshiping the create the creation over the creator. There it is. When God is telling you to cut those relationships off. And that's what happened to me when I caught that case. I end up getting coming back to God and I was in the church. I was a baby and I end up getting caught in a relationship with a leader. Mm. who was um, my, he was like a spiritual mentor. He was, you know, he was all of that. He was really teaching me everything. And I ended up in a soul tie, a sexual soul tie with him. And it was devastating. It was traumatizing. And um, so, yeah, that, and going through that, I, I didn't even know anything about narcissism. And hmm. I didn't even know anything about the word narcissist or anything like that because it was, it was a psychologically abusive relationship. It was verbally and mentally, you know, abusive and watch this. And I stayed in that for a minute. That's when I made a decision at 25 to become seller because it it, it just, it, it traumatized me so bad. It hurt me so bad. And I mean, this guy was really abusing me. You understand what I'm saying? And so, um, 
I made the decision to come out of that relationship after dealing with him because it just it just hurt me so bad. But this is what God showed me, the reason why I was attracted to him and the reason why I was attracted to men from my past that were toxic. And that's why I don't hate men. I don't I don't hate men. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't hate I don't hate anybody. It's just that at this point in my life, because when I meet people now, my family say, oh, well, how long is he going to last a week? Because they know I don't play. I don't play. <laughs> he said a week. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because no, because I don't, I don't play around with soul ties. I don't play around with red flags. I don't yeah. play around when the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, uh, 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 uh. I don't care how fine he is. I don't care what he has. I don't care what his position is, what his status is. I don't care about any of that stuff because Good. I'm so disconnected from the things in this world. None of that moved me. So if the Holy Spirit said move, if the Holy Spirit said, uh, 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 that ain't it, I move quickly because Unraveling yourself from a soul tie, that thing is It's painful. It takes a lot of it, time. You got it, you you lose your whole identity. You like, yes. I don't even know. You you question how you think, you question how you move, you question everything that you ha- walked into that relationship with. So you walk into that relationship with confidence. Now you find yourself insecure. It's the yes. it's the most painful thing. And so um in the last season, the last episode of the season, I talk about uh a past relationship that I had that I don't really talk much about. Mm -hmm. But when you start talking about the spirit of narcissism, when I say I totally understand that in Uh dealing with this particular individual and the one, the first thing that God told me to do when I said, God, I have to break a free and God says, stop having sex. And I said, I said, what does that have to do with anything? And God said, the minute you stop having sex with this individual Mm -hmm. is going to release something. And so when you release something in the spirit, then now you can start releasing it in the, in the, in the natural. And because sex is a, is a spiritual connection. And that's how I began to start the process of unraveling and detaching myself from that said individual. Yes. Um, I wanted to really touch on what I was going to say earlier. The Holy spirit is reminding me of that. And that is, I was attracted to toxic men because of my own internal brokenness. Mm. I was attracted to toxic men because I was so broken. And that's why I stayed in those relationships. And that's why I'm really ministering to women because there is no need to be angry or mad at anybody because there are so many women that are angry right now because a man abused them verbally, mentally, psychologically, and even sexually. Um, And they're angry because they stayed, Yeah, you know, but a man can't do what you don't allow him to, you know what I'm saying? But if I allow it, but God showed me that it was what that was, it was what was in the side of me that that was, was that was drawing these men. And is that is what, what caused me to stay in those relationships. You understand what I'm saying? I was walking around life as a victim. I had a victim mentality. So guess what? So I was attracting victimizers that came into my life to validate my victim mentality. And that's all what is going on with these toxic relationships and men and women that's in relationships with somebody who they can't seem to let go. No, you're maintaining that toxic connection. It's because you have a victim mentality. You refuse to rise to the person that God has created you to be, yeah. you just want that person to stay in your life to validate your victim mentality. So you're going to keep that victimizer in your life. And so that is why I had to allow God to, to heal me because when I made a decision to become celibate at the age of 25, for the first 10 years, I didn't even go out with men. No dates. You said the first 10 years. Years And it's not something that God instructed me like, oh, you better. It's just something that I decided to do because coming out of that relationship with that leader, I was so broken. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was so broken. I was so broken. And and he used to, you know, used to let me know that it was okay, you know, for us to be having sex. And this is a leader. This is a this is a clergy. Yeah. That I was dealing with, you know what I'm saying? And so by me being a baby and the Lord didn't know anything about the word, you talking about a woman that just came fresh off the street, you know, from a 20 year <laughs> face, facing a 20 year prison sentence. You know, I don't know. the. I'm not prolific yeah. in the scripture. Yeah. But when I start getting in the word for myself mm, mm, and mm. when I begin to develop a relationship with God for myself, I say, you know what? This. Uh uh-uh, uh, uh 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 uh. 
This ain't right. And so you the one that you, you ended the relationship? I did. I did. I did. And it was very torturous um, because, I mean, they, you know, they were showing up at the house and, you know, showing up at the window, trying to get through the window. and <laughs> Really? <laughs> yes. They said they weren't going to let you go. You know, it was crazy, you know, and um, but I start getting to know God for myself. And then the Holy Spirit introduced me to my now spiritual father, who was Dr. Mike Moore um, at Faith Chapel Christian Center. And um, I began to grow in the word. So I cut that soul tie off. And for the first 10 years, I didn't date anybody, no dinner, no, no movies, no on the phone with no, no Netflix guys, and chill, no, no Netflix and chill, <laughs> you know, because to be honest with you, and I'm just being transparent, yeah. I went 10 years without talking to any guys because I didn't trust men. And there it is. And that's the main thing. And, and you had good reason to, because not only were you violated as a young girl, but then you were violated. And when I say spiritual abuse is the worst abuse, when you get with somebody that, that manipulates the word of God mm -hmm. and I mean, straight up manipulates you and deceives you with the word of God. It's exactly what Satan did in the in the garden. And so that's a lot to unpack and to get healed from because now you start even questioning. You, not only are you questioning men, but you're questioning your judgment of men. And, and I was questioning my judgment of men. And yeah. so that's why, you know, like I said, God didn't have me being by myself all that time. It's just that I did. I had fear. Yeah. I was broken. I was traumatized. And not only that, not only was I traumatized by the men that I was dealing with from my past, but I was traumatized from relationships around me because everybody was getting divorced. You know what I'm saying? Yes. No relationships was really thriving to me. No relationships was really healthy. Yeah. And all of these people that I been knowing all of my life, they was been, you know, they, they had been married one, one time, you know, three times, four times, you know, two. So I'm like, you know what, <laughs> this is what I decided when I was doing that time, you know, from 25 to 30 when I wasn't dating anybody. I said, another human being can't heal you. So that's why I made a decision not to be dating different men and going out with this man, being with that man, being with that man, because I noticed that human beings, I say these human beings are not healing other human beings. <laughs> I'm like, no, no I'm, I'm That's serious. Real. That was my, that was my logic. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to have to go to God so God can heal me because a man cannot heal me. That's good. A man cannot heal me. And so, during that time, I was just with God, you know what I'm saying, and spending a lot of time in prayer and doing a lot of fasting and, you know, just consecrating myself. And that's when God called me into the ministry, and I recognized that I had been called to preach. And so I went through ministerial school and, you know, went through my process. God had restored my relationship with my father because, Good. yeah, my father, um, like I said, him and my mother got a divorce and, um, you know, we wasn't really talking a whole lot. We were separated. Um, and uh, But God restored my relationship with my father. Before my father, I'm the one my father was with when he took his last breath. I was the one that was named after him. His name was Lester. My name is Lestine. And um, my father, um, I was with him when he took his last breath. I was in his presence. And um, he spoke some prophetic words over me before he left this earth. My God, my, 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 my father always believed in me. He always thought that I was very powerful. And he spoke some very powerful things to me before he closed his eyes. And um, so that's why that's why I'm really here. And that's why I'm very passionate yeah. because, you know, God, you know, he restored us. He repented to my mother for what he did to her. And that's when my healing really began years ago when my father had enough heart for God to repent to my mother how he treated her. He got his heart right before he left this earth. He repented to her. He repented to us. Our relationship was blossoming and very beautiful um, before he passed away. That's why when his cancer came back last year, you know, I was spending a lot of time with him. I got a lot of videos in my phone recording our conversations and interaction. It was very beautiful. So you see how God began to yes, restore my restore. soul and began to restore my life. And um, because I just didn't, I didn't trust me. And I thought that they all were predators. 
And I'm just being, can I yeah. be honest here? Yeah. See, listen, on the podcast, we say we keep it lit. We live intensely and okay. transparently. So whatever's on your heart, share it, because I'm going to share what's on my heart. I'm okay. going to ask you some real questions, some hard questions. We're just going to talk. Absolutely. Yeah. I, re- I really I really thought that men were just predators. I thought that men, they just only want to just have sex with you. Um They don't want anything serious. And so me being by myself, that was my way of protecting myself. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people, to be honest with you, a lot of people, they, they, they do, they ask me, you're 46 and you know, you're not married. People love to ask you the famous question. Why are you single? Something must be wrong. It doesn't mean that something is necessarily wrong. It's just that, you know, I made a decision to love myself. I got out of the the rat race of society of trying to go and find a man and find somebody to 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 feel me, to fulfill me, to make me feel good about myself. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to be sleeping with this man and sleeping with that man and because we do as women, we do. It is what it is. We associate yeah. sex as love. Yes. We think yes. that just because we're sleeping with a man and he's yeah. hugging us and he's kissing us and oh I love you, we think that he's in love because yes. To be honest with you, a man can sleep with you and not even like you. At all. At all. Am I right? 100%. Okay. So we as women, we associate that um, as love. And so I just didn't want to be out in the world trying to feel my soul and to heal my soul that was traumatized with different men and sleeping with different men. That's why for the last 21 years, I haven't been rolling around in the bed with different men and dating this person. And to be honest with you, I'm not even a serial dater. I'm just so okay. So let's think. We had a conversation. You do desire marriage, right? I do desire marriage, but it wasn't until that's why people look at me and say, "Oh, she's forty six and she's still not married." I did not get serious about wanting a husband or desiring a husband or wanting to get married until I was forty four. So you tell me, only two years ago, you had, so so you was gonna just be a nun. You was gonna just go for the rest of your life, not being married. You just you, so you were actually you weren't just being abstinent. You were being celibate. So we're gonna talk real quick about the difference between abstinence and celibacy. Absolutely. So abstinence is abstaining from sex until a point in time, which is marriage. And some people say they're gonna wait until they get into a serious relationship or start dating, whatever that mm-hmm. is. Celibate is a vow of celibacy where you're not going to have sex nor do you want marriage. And right. so oftentimes we interchange the words incorrectly Absolutely. and say I'm practicing celibacy when in fact it's abstinence. And so what you were saying at the beginning, you were actually practicing celibacy because you didn't want to get married and you didn't want to have sex. I wouldn't say that I was, I made a decision to be celibate because that's like a nun. Yeah. Like you just don't want to get married. Here's my thing. I did vow the vow of abstinence. I just wasn't obsessed. And this, it, it's, it's, <laughs> I just wasn't, I've never been obsessed with the wedding dress, the white dress and the marriage thing like most women. But I'm talking about outside of obsession. We're talking about, you said two years ago, you actually yes. decided that, okay, I do want to be married. Yeah, that's when I got serious about praying for a husband. It's not that I never wanted to get married. <laughs> you just, it was just, I just back in the never, back. It was yeah, it was, it was in the back. And I never associated being with a man as being whole. Okay, hold on, hold on. So, so let me get this right, Lestine. You said it was two years ago when you actually decided that you even wanted to be married. Absolutely, absolutely. And guess what the date was? The date was 11-11-2018. It was on November 11. Lestine, I'm you're about not, to run around your studio. Lestine, you're not going to tell me that that happened on the day that this episode is running. That's what you're not going to do. On November the 11th, 2018 is when I got on my knees and got serious with God about praying for a husband and praying about my husband. And God connected me with my husband. It's in my journal. I have the date. I have everything written down. It was on November the 11th, 2018 is when I made the decision. Okay, God, I'm ready now. That's why you said that this date was significant. It's significant for a lot of reasons. I started flying, you know what I'm saying, on 11-11 um, five years ago. So 11-11 is a very significant number that God has used in my life. Um, but, yeah, so a lot of people ask me, you know, okay, she's in her 40s. And, you know, that's why people don't need to judge 
people when they're not married right. in their 40s, you know, or their 50s or their 30s or whatever. Society needs to stop putting pressure because I, I refused to allow anybody to put pressure on me. You understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm more passionate about my purpose than being with a person. That's why when Jesus said in John 17, verse 4, he said, Father, he said, I have finished the work. Yes. He said, I have finished the work that you have given me. He said, now glorify me with thyself. Notice he had a work to fulfill. Yes. He had a purpose to fulfill. And so that is what I have been passionate about more than anything than being with a man. Not saying that I don't like men because I know that it's God's will for us to not be alone. It's not God's will for me to spend the rest of my life by myself. I'm fully aware that it's just that I made a decision not to allow society to put pressure on me to get in a rush to get married, nor am I moved by my biological time clock. You understand what I'm saying? To rush into getting married because I have seen so many failed marriages throughout my life, not just in my family, not just with friends, but with people around the world, you know, celebrities, you know, people in the church, and especially in the church, I've seen a lot of divorces happen in the church. So I never associated being with a man as being complete. Yeah. I have associated being complete as my relationship with God. He's the only person that can fulfill my soul. He's the only person, according to Psalms 23 and 3, the Bible says that the Lord restores my soul. He was the only one that was able to restore my soul from the trauma of being molested, being uh, my, my brother being murdered, my father and my mother getting a divorce, me being psychologically, verbally, and physically abused by men, you know what I'm saying, as a teenager and as a young woman. No man on this planet could restore me. I had to get that from the secret place. I had to get that from God. And this is what God is telling me on this platform that he has given to me. God is telling me to point women back to him. It is not, it is not um, a man that's going to heal you. Now, I do believe that love is very powerful. Yeah. I do believe that God can bring people into your life that's healthy yes. and that's whole that they have the that capacity your healing. Yeah, they, they, they have the capacity to love you. They have the mindset and the mentality to love you. They're not in that broken state where they want to use you and abuse you. I do believe that God can flow through people to heal you. I believe that their love and their support and their encouragement them speaking life to you. It can help to restore you. God do use people to help restore us, but ultimately we got to get that from God. And that's why even right now as a prophet and as a woman of God, that's why I'm not sexually active even now is because I know that my womb cannot heal a man's wounds. Say that one more time. That's why I'm not sexually active right now because I know that my womb cannot heal the wounds of a man. I know that a man's healing has to come through worship, not through my womb. And every man on this planet who God has called to be a priest, a prophet, and the king, God has called these men to be a leader, to take their position back that he bestowed upon Adam in the Garden of Eden. God is calling men. He is drawing them back to the secret place, back to his presence to fall asleep in him. That is why he, that's why he showed me that that's why there are so many single women, because a lot of men haven't fallen asleep in God. Remember when Adam, the moment, watch this, Adam, Adam was put into a deep sleep by God. God put him in a deep sleep to pull the rib out of him so that he can bring forth Eve. Watch this. Adam had never met Eve, but the moment he woke up from the deep sleep, she he recognized there. who Eve was because he had been asleep in God. I'm about to run around this <laughs> studio right now. And that is what God, that is why God have me ministering to the women and pouring into the women to get them back in their position so that we can point these men back to God so that they can go and fall asleep in God so that they'll be able to recognize. Watch this. God began to show me that the reason why so many people are confused with these soul ties, because watch this sex outside of marriage. I don't care who try to downplay it. I don't care who try to dispute it. I don't care who don't believe it, but sex, it blinds you. It blinds you from the truth. Come on now. It blinds you and it binds you. It blinds you and it binds you. I'm telling you, it will blind you from the truth of the character of that person. That's why you that's why you see so many people stay in relationships too long. They they should have said goodbye at hello. <laughs> that is why you got people. <laughs> Instead of you had me at hello. 
You should have said you should have said bye at hello. You should have said goodbye at hello. But they stay in those relationships past the expiration date. Yes. They stay a year longer, five years longer. I got women on my page that's been with a guy for twenty five years. Message me because this guy, she want to be with him, she want to marry him, but he has been giving her excuses for, for twenty five years. years why he can't marry her. Want to maintain the sexual relationship, but. She's not good enough to marry. And I got women on my page that's been dating for 18 years, 19 years, 15 years. You know why? It's because of a soul tie. It's because you become one with the person. A marriage certificate don't consummate a marriage. It it's, don't. it's sex that yep. consummated. Yep. And you, you, you become one with that person. And so that is why it's so difficult to break free. And watch this. And once you sleep with that individual, once you sleep with the person, it blinds you to the character, their character. It blinds you to the red flags. So now that you have given yourself, given your body to this person, you become subject to this person. Watch mm. this. And watch this. And you even take on the spirit of that person. Mm. Mm -hmm. You begin to take on, watch this. That's why, that's why so many people are depressed. Because watch this. Every time a woman lay down with a man, everything that that man is dealing with, anybody that he is sleeping with outside of you, you are picking up her emotions. You are, you are picking up whatever it is that she's dealing with. You are picking up whatever. You are carrying all of that frustration in your soul because you have became one with this person. So that's why God is using me to speak prophetically to the nations. Because watch this. So ties it it hijacks your thoughts it hijacks your mind it hijacks your purpose it calls you to be stuck and stagnant you will be treading in one place for a year two years and three years when god trying to get you to your destiny god trying to get you to your purpose he trying to get you here but you stuck and stagnant in that relationship because you can't really move because that relationship it's causing depression. It's causing sadness. There is constant confusion. There's a constant talk of war in that relationship when God is trying to move you forward in that relationship. And that's why sex is so detrimental. Yes, God created sex. Yes, it's very normal, but it is within the covenant. It's within a covenant that God has ordained sex. So this is why God had me on this assignment, because God is ready for men and women to get in their rightful place so that they can recognize who their husband is, so they can recognize who their wife is. Because guess what? Even men right now that's watching this broadcast and that's going to watch later on that God is trying to get you to your wife. He's trying to get you to your Ruth. He's trying to get you to your Ruth. But you over here with Jezebel. <laughs> You over here with the wrong woman. Watch this. And because of sex and because your mind is clouded, you can't recognize your root. You can't recognize the woman that God has for you. And now here you are. You got this woman over here being held up because you too blind to see because you are spiritually asleep. And that's what God is doing. God is through my voice, through my prophetic voice. God is waking up the sons and the daughters of God because, listen, we're, you can tell that time is moving. Listen, when I preached at my father's um, eulogy, when I preached his eulogy, the message was the time is now. And God said, I said, God, I don't want to teach that at a funeral. I don't want to talk about the time. But God was letting me know. And you can feel it. I can feel it. Everybody in the world can feel it. It seemed like time is speeding up. Fast. It's moving fast. So we don't have any more time to waste to be outside of the will of God. And that is what soul ties does. It keeps you out of the will of God. Watch this. It keeps you from filling your purpose. Watch this. A lot of people are confused that because they probably driving a nice BMW, because they got a nice Mercedes, they got a nice house. So they feel like God is blessing me. I'm blessed. I got money. I got. But watch this. You may have the material possessions. Watch this. But you're separated from God. Spiritual death is the worst form of death. Being separated from God. Okay, that's great. You got a Mercedes. Okay, that's great that you went and got your five degrees. That's great that you got a nice house. That's great that you got all of that is great and that all of that is wonderful. But there is nothing in this world that can compare to our relationship with God. Nothing in this world. And that's what God is doing with us. God is getting us out of idolatry. He is getting us out of witchcraft. He is trying to turn our hearts back to him. It is time for us, like the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation, that it's time for us to return turn to our first love. And he ain't just talking to women. He is talking to men as well because God is ready for men to take their rightful place in his kingdom so that we can fulfill God's purposes in the earth. And we cannot do that living in sin because sin, it holds you back. Sin, it holds you down. Sexual immorality, if you look at it and if you do the history and if you do the math, you look back, anything, something was destroyed, it was because of sexual immorality, meaning in government, 
a government official, if you look at a church leader, yep. if you go back and do do if you do the the check a ministry that died or ministry that, you know what I'm saying? That dispersed the people. Or a whole or nation to, like Sodom and Gomorrah. Just it was because whole. of sexual immorality. Sexual in, immorality is destructive. It's deadly. It can literally take you off this planet before your time. My daughter's best friend, 29 years old, wrong soul tie. When she was ready to break free from the relationship because he was abusive, he took a gun and blew her brains out. Soul tie, wrong soul tie, Wrong person. We can connect ourselves to the wrong person. And you got a lot of women right now that desire their, they, they desire to be married. They desire to be in a relationship. But because they still holding on to boo-boo over here, mm -hmm. God been telling them to cut it off. Stop accepting those phone calls. Stop accepting those emails. Stop accepting those messages. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And they wondering why they still single. Because they still have those soul ties and keeping themselves connected. You know what God told me? And I want to say this because there are somebody that's going to be listening to this message right now. God has been telling them to cut that connection off, meaning the communication. Because when we have soul ties and especially a sexual soul tie, we want to maintain a friendship with these people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's because it's a soul tie. But God is telling you to cut it off because God told me, he said, every time you answer that call, every time you answer that email, every time you respond... You are attaching yourself to death. You are attaching yourself to your past. So it's very difficult for you to move forward in your future. How come on lots wife. Yeah, yeah. How is it possible for you to move towards your future and still be looking back and still be looking back in your past? You know what I'm saying? And you got a lot of women right now. They want to get married, but Boaz is searching for Ruth, not Jezebel. See, Boaz is attracted to the scent and the aura and the spirit of Ruth, not Jezebel. So I can't be over here operating in the spirit of Jezebel, sleeping with different men and creating all these soul ties with all these different men. And I think Boaz is about to find me. Last thing, <laughs> you know, went into a whole sermon and I'm just letting you preach because this is so doggone good. And as I told you when I first talked to you, I said, listen, I haven't made a commitment of abstinence. I said, even on my podcast, I talk about that. I talk about Armani even finding some condoms in the armrest of my car. Yes. And he was like, Dad, what are you doing with these? And I was like, what do you expect? I said, what do you think I'm doing with them? And he was like, you ain't supposed to be having sex. You're a Christian. I said, it's not that I'm having sex right now, but I'm going to keep that door open. I said, it will be times when mm -hmm. I do and will be times when I want. And I said... Wow, this is interesting that I'm having this conversation with my my 17 year old son, and um, and so one thing that I'm I'm always transparent, and I'm always honest, mm -hmm. and I understand seasons of life, and I understand, and I'm obedient, and so the obedience comes. It's interesting because someone would probably say, "Why would Latarius have someone on his podcast talking about abstinence when he himself isn't practicing abstinence?" Right. It's because I'm obedient to the season. I know what seeds are going to be planted on this episode that's going to even impact my own life and my mm -hmm. own journey. Mm -hmm. And when I make that that decree and that commitment, then it's a public commitment. It's not something that I'm going to say just because it's what I'm supposed to say, but behind closed doors, I'm getting it in and doing whatever. It's, it's me now possessing the anointing that comes from actually being steadfast and unmovable on that journey. And so I feel that time coming extremely soon. Um, even when I talk to you about, um, I understand the power of sex. I understand the power of soul mm -hmm. ties. I understand, mm -hmm. I understand the power of a commitment to to maintain, because God told me straight up, God told me, he said, Leteris, you'll never be able to be faithful to your wife unless you first become faithful to me. He says, so you can sit here and, and play these games, having sex outside of marriage, and then uh, try to get married to the person that I bring into your life and have your slip ups or whatever and have sex with that person. But you're going to struggle with uh, fidelity until you get to the point where you say, God, I love you. I love me enough not to violate this woman by having sex with her. Uh, when I commit to some, I commit with it 1000%. And so um, I thank you for planting that seed, not only in my life today, but in the seed, the planting that seed across 
everybody into the mind of everybody that listens to this podcast because everybody's in their different levels people in their levels where some people have been uh celibate for five years six years two years two months 30 yeah. days mm-hmm. one day months. one week yeah. you have people that say hey i'm still i just i just had sex yesterday and mm-hmm. i don't feel convicted about having sex but the seed will be planted in their mind that when they say you know what i'm empty um and i remember this lady named lestine who was on this podcast called Dear Future. Let me go listen to that episode again. And 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 then God will speak to them. They'll hear it on a different level. And 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 one thing that I always say about what we do in the church, we beat people up with the word, but not yeah. allowing God to water that seed. Yeah. All we're supposed to do is plant. That's we're, it. We're, yeah, we're, that's, we're just That's garbage. all I'm doing is planting. Yeah, yeah. we're planting those seeds. And then the person says, hmm. Okay, because when you're speaking the truth, the truth will resonate. And in different seasons, people will extract the truth. Like you can read the Bible and pull out, glean different things from different scriptures at 40 years old than when you were 12 or when you were 15. And you go, oh, this is just illuminated to me. This is a whole different revelation I'm getting mm-hmm. from it. Because God, word, he has a living word of God, which means it's actively living and evolving and moving. And it's the same word, but as you evolve and learn and grow, then it resonates on a different level. And so even just listening to you, I'm just smiling and I'm just going, mm, that's good. <laughs> Tell people about the event that, that we're going to be doing coming up on the 22nd. I'm so excited about that. And I'm just so thankful and grateful that um, you're going to be hosting that for me. And it's called the global purity ceremony. And it is going to be powerful. Women already from all over the world have already signed up. And um, it's about, it's God told me to do it. God told me to turn women back to him to point them in the right direction because that's all I can do as a minister, as a prophet of God is to, that's what prophets are called to do. That's what ministers are called to do. We're called to point people to God, not ourselves, but it's to him. And so that's what this purity ceremony is about. It's about rededication to Christ. Women that um, desire to be abstinent and to marry, you know, they're just tired of the cycle. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of women that, that come to me on social media. They're just tired of the cycle. They're tired of doing things God's way. I mean, doing things their way. They want to do things God's way. Right. And so the purity ceremony is going to be so powerful. We, women, they've already purchased their purity rings. I'm going to teach on that day. It's going to be live all over the world. And uh, I'm going to share the message that God has given to me. And, um, and at the end, it's just like a wedding, a real wedding. Um, I'm going to pray over the women. I'm going to... Um, have them to put on their rings. I'm going to share whatever, the, you know, what the Lord has given to me. And uh, they're going to be live. Everybody's going to have on white. All the women, they're going to be live. on. It's just going to be a very, very powerful experience um, for women to, because women that's been celibate for a long time is going to be a part of it as well. They just want to reinforce the commitment that they have made. And um, you got women that's ready to start the journey because they really want to wait until they get married before they have sex again. So that's going to happen on November 22nd. Look, 22, 11, 11. 11, 11, 22. It's just, it's just, ah, I, I hear you, Holy Spirit. What God told me before when I was talking to you that day, he said that my obedience is linked to setting other men free. You can't free people unless you get free yourself. And so the reason why these seeds that are being planted and the reason why I agreed to to sponsor uh, this this global uh, purity ceremony is because I want that seed planted in my life because God showed me, Letaris, you're going to do that for men in the future. That is so powerful. And, and I said, God, that's, that's strange. I ain't never heard of man's uh, men's purity ceremony. That just, I've never heard of that. He said, that's because you're supposed to do it. So I need you to get your act together, get your act right, because now I'm going to lead you in that. So what God, that's why I said, I understand obedience. And I said, okay, God, whatever, I'm going to go ahead and do this for her. And we're going to put this on and we're going to plant that seed. And God, I ask that you, you know, let that seed be You know why I believe God is leading you to do that. And he had us to connect because we connected through social media. Yep. See how powerful social yeah. media is, yeah. you know, it's just so powerful how God just lined this up and how we connected. Cause I don't, I, I didn't know you personally right um but god is leading you on that path because men are our leaders yeah it is what it is they are our head you know and that's just what god has ordained for men and and that's why i'm not submitting and surrendering myself to no man (laughs) if he is not following christ amen 
You understand what Amen. I'm saying? So God is just ready for the men to get back, you know what I'm saying, in their place and in their position so they can lead the women. Have you ever been, like, in this 20, 21-year journey, mm -hmm. have you come close to getting married to somebody or has somebody where it almost oh, derailed yeah. you from oh, your yeah. purpose? Oh, yes, yes, derailed. Yes, I like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. derailed. Yes, yeah. I definitely, I, I did. I mean, after my 10-year hiatus, I yeah. did. I met someone, and... um he was from my hometown. He was from my hometown. And um, I really liked him. Ooh, <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> but yeah, it was. Yeah, I did. I allowed him into my space and um, I did. I allowed him to my space and I didn't know. I didn't know that he wasn't. You know what I'm saying? What practicing abstinence? Well, no, no, didn't I, what? No, healthy. I just, you know, healthy oh, emotionally. Oh, okay, emotionally. Yeah, healthy emotionally, and it did, and I, I did allow him in my space, and it, it was toxic. You know, um, the, the, the verbal abuse, the mental abuse, and everything, and so, yeah, but it, you know, that situation didn't work out, but I did, I did allow him, you know, to really get close to me, and I really liked him. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought, you know, he was. Could possibly be the one, but God was telling me the whole time that he he's not the one. Now, um, after him, I did meet somebody, and we dated for six months, and um, that didn't work out. That didn't work out. So yeah, so it's two so guys. so so. What do they say when you say, "Hey, listen, I'm I'm practicing abstinence." Oh God, um, I can't say I can't say the guy's name. The guy who I was dating, I was, and I, I did. I, I really liked him. He was from Baltimore. Um, he was he was a minister, so he was okay with it. He didn't he didn't try to violate me, and he didn't try to violate me in any way. He understood it. Now, not saying that he wasn't attracted to me and that he didn't want to have sex with me. Um, did he ever try? Towards the end. <laughs> Towards the end. He's like, girl, you're going to give me some. I've been waiting this long. You tripping. Six months long enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, you know, it was more, you know, of him just, you know, wanting to get close to me and hug me yeah. and kissing me and stuff like that. And because when I first met my, met my best friend 16 years ago, I told her that even when I um, started dating a guy or courting, I'm not even going to kiss him. I'm, I'm not going to let my husband kiss me before we get married. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't want to kiss. I don't want to kiss. And God has, um, God has given me an instruction, and I'm going to talk about that on the, on the, the on purity the ceremony. You know, the guy from my hometown, the guy from my hometown who I really liked. Um, I'm just, I'm going to share my whole spiel about Good. him, and um, I'm going to wait to the end to share that yeah. about him, the guy from Alabama. But um, I'm going to wait until I get married. I'm, I mean, I'm going to wait. Now, when I start courting my guy, now he'll be able to kiss me on my hand. <laughs> Or, you know, he can kiss my cheek and he can kiss my forehead, you know, because that's a very dear, you know, that's a nice kiss. You know, a yeah. guy kiss you on your forehead. Um, I think that's precious, you know, but kissing him on the lips, that's just out of the question for me because kissing somebody yeah. and tonguing, else, though. baby, when yeah. you kiss start them, start turning you on and next thing and you, you know, stuff flowing and yeah. you're getting all aroused and I, and I just don't want to go there. I don't want to put him in that position. I don't want, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to stay away from that. So I, I take it you're going to get married real fast. You're going to meet the person. Y'all going to be like, all right, listen, you who I want. I did the work. You did the work. Girl, let's get married. Well, yeah, well, God already later. told me that my courtship won't be long. You know, yeah. he told me that, he told me it won't be long and Same drawn here. out because the man that he's come. Now, he did recently tell me to prepare because it's marriage it's be, is upon me. It's going to be the it's season gonna be quickly. Is we can't we can't leave this podcast without talking about this because a lot of times people are practicing abstinence and you know it begins to be uh, a controversial subject matter when we start talking about masturbation during abstinence. So what is your take on that? And did you ever experience that during your season of abstinence? And God had to have you stop that, or you still practice uh, masturbation like what's the story no behind i don't no i don't believe in masturbation i don't even believe in toys mm -hmm. and here's why i don't believe in doing that because all of that to me is still sex is just self sex yeah you're still having to go in your mind in a demonic way to even to even get a release you got to right. be thinking about somebody and you know to even go there and i just really believe that masturbation and using toys and using those things is still a form of perversion you know what i'm saying and you still violating your temple because our body is the temple of the holy spirit so i personally believe that god don't want us to be engaging in masturbation so 
Lestine, thank you so much for blessing our listeners on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Y'all, give it up for Lestine. Wow, this was an extremely powerful episode. I hope you guys took a lot away from this. Um, You know what? I just believe that God has me on a unique journey, and I believe that season two is setting the foundation for me manifesting my future wifey. And I believe that this subject matter that we discussed today um, was exactly what God wanted me to talk about uh, because I believe he's doing an inner work in me and I'm just playing it out in front of the whole world. And so it's pretty, pretty interesting, very transparent and vulnerable. uh, But I thank God for everything that he's doing. So I hope you guys took a lot from this episode. So here's my favorite part of the episode is where I manifest my future wifey. Oh, yeah. This is the new Dear Future fountain pen. Um, These will be for sale shortly. Um, I'm getting the website done, but it's a beautiful, beautiful pen. A lot of you guys have been talking about um, journaling and God said, hey, why don't I just create some pens and an actual journal. So y'all be on the lookout for that. Dear future wifey, I love to spill my heart's desire of you in ink across white pages. I have totally submitted to this season of singleness. I've become a student of my soul so that I'll gladly become a scholar of yours. My masculinity has no bearing of me humbly submitting to you. Though our singleness is a season, rest assured, our marriage won't be. The leaves on trees can die and be born again 10,000 times and my heart will still be rooted in you. I will become pure for you. My faithfulness to Christ will soon become the foundation to uphold my faithfulness to you. I won't lie. The struggle is real, but I believe that's what's required for the real love we will share. I will achieve the goal of denying my flesh so that when the time comes, You will happily allow me to partake of you like a buffet at a five-star restaurant. (laughs) Girl, let me quit. Your future hubby. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit. Live intentionally and transparently. And don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.